Hey guys, welcome back to Inc. Today in conversation, I have with me a friend of mine called George Burgess. George is a young guy that's been incredibly successful on social media and modeling. Today we talk about a shoot that George did with GQ and look at how he overcomes some anxieties as a young male model. Enjoy the conversation and as always, like, share and subscribe. All right, how's it going? Welcome to today's episode from Inc. We've all had one of those days where you feel like you don't matter. Everything's going wrong and no one is there to listen or relate. But here at Inc, you do matter and here we can relate. Because for all of us, there's always a something, a one thing, or many things that can really affect the way we think and feel. We hope that today's conversation brings a little bit of hope to your day. And do make sure to stay connected by subscribing to the channel. Sweet. George, how's it going, mate? You having a good day? Yes, very well, thank you, mate. Very, very yeah. good. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excited for people to get an insight into this conversation. We just had a good little catch up and I think it's good. I'm excited about it. You are a young guy, 22. You have the dream job of most kids. <laughs> it, well, here's the two dream jobs that I get when I speak to young people. Yeah. A, play, a professional PlayStation 4 player, which I would flip and love to do. I would love to be playing FIFA all day, every day. See, I'm more of a Call of Duty guy, to be honest, but yeah. <laughs> Warzone. It, I, I suck at it, but I'm all about it. Or the second job is content creator for Instagram and YouTube, makeup tutorials, sitting there on you know TikTok or whatever. No, not TikTok. That other one where you just Twitch, where you just game all day. Yeah. So you're a content creator. Um, you kind of have that dream lifestyle, that dream job. Tell us a little bit about it, how you got into it. Yeah, so um, I've been posting on Instagram for the last couple of years. Um, to be fair, it started off, I've, I've been doing photography and stuff like that for the last, well, since I was, I, I took a, a, a huge interest in it when I was doing GCSE, um, creative, what is media actually. And then I went to college and did creative media production where I learned more about cameras, did a little bit of journalism uh, and also web design as well. Um, but photography and stuff like that I, I feel like I've always been quite a creative person um, I've always enjoyed I haven't been the most academic of people I've always enjoyed like yeah the the, the creative side the creative aspects of life I guess um, but from there I've uh, it, it's weird to say I've always had some sort of interest in cameras and photography even if it was just playing around with GoPros or whatever it might be um, but I had a go at making YouTube videos actually when I was a lot younger. I think I was about 14 yeah. when I did my first YouTube video. A lot of people took the mick at me at school for it. And I'm, it was funny to be fair, looking back, like I shouldn't have posed at it, but I feel like it's just part of the learning experience, part of the process. Um, I sort of, I've always made little home videos, little bits and pieces. And then I went to college, did the creative media production, which I said about, and then I went to a bricklaying course where it just became a hobby and I didn't really focus on doing it as a future. It just stayed as a bit of a background thing. Um, it's only been the last couple of years where I have really focused on getting photos for myself and pushing it as such on social media, like Instagram. Um, I've been posting on Instagram. Yeah. For, for a couple of years, but, it, but yeah. <laughs> It's good, mate. It's good. So let's talk about like, I'm sure everybody thinks that it's all like, you know, you put a good filter on it, you take your shirt off, you do a couple of press ups and you take a pretty boy picture. Yeah. But ultimately it comes at a cost, right? Right. And I know for you personally, it came at the cost to do this professionally, came at the cost of, you know, leaving an incredible job with a family business. Um, what are some of the costs, whether that's like mental, like anxiety, depression, anything like that, or just the cost of time and work? What are some of the costs that you feel like you, you've had to pay to become, you know, as successful as you are? Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of, right, okay, so the costs, I, I don't see it as cost because I see it all of experience. Um, I think Good. having, having saying something, saying that you're looking at something as, as a cost as such, I feel like it's quite a negative way to yeah. look at 
something that you want to pursue. I always try and be optimistic and, and positive about uh, looking at new opportunities, whether it's an adventure, whether it's trying to pursue something that I'm interested in. At the end of the day, if I'm going to learn from it and I can grow from it, I see it as a positive experience. Um, in terms of commitment to try and push yourself into the industry, I think some of the, the biggest thing that you need to focus on is consistency and you only get consistent with time. Uh, you, you need to give it time. You have to understand what sort of section you want to pursue if you want to go into the whole Instagram creative media scene as such. Um, you know, you've got fashion, makeup, beauty, you've got games, whatever it might be, you need to learn about your industry, your genre as such, um, and almost understand your audience. But it's something that does come with time. I feel like a lot of people go to social media and they say, oh, I want to be like this guy. But if you're just going to imitate what this guy's doing, you're not going to find your own style. You need to find your own style for people to, to interact and engage with you. You can't just rely on trying to make, some, make your photos, whatever, look like somebody else's photos, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, with, yeah, I think like I'm going to use the words cost uh what cost does it come come at <sighs> obviously you do need to spend money on equipment a lot of people say that you don't need to spend stupid money on on a camera everybody's got a phone that's very true i started off taking my photos on an iphone uh and over time i've slowly pro i've slowly progressed and you know bought a better camera i've invested in equipment that i can help develop what i'm using um mm. but yeah I think that kind of answers your question. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's good. Has it come at any sort of like mental cost? Has there been any times where you've, you know, wrestled with putting yourself out there, posting an image or, or maybe backlash that you've had? Has it ever come some sort of mental cost? Maybe it hasn't. Or is there anything you can think of there? Yeah, I wouldn't say I've had any backlash from anything because I, I don't think I've posted anything that's had any nothing nothing that i've posted has ever been that controversial um mm. i do look quite young for my age so a lot of people that follow me just follow me for for my looks um and that's not me like bigging myself up at all by the way <laughs> <laughs> um, Mate, you're a handsome boy don't worry about it Good. No, i appreciate it thank you but um i feel like one of the hardest things to recognize um is no is when you actually get to know someone finding a relationship with someone when you're when you're getting to know someone getting to know whether they're actually interested in you or whether they're just interested mm. in your status as such. Um, I've been to re referred to quite a lot as, as a bit of a trophy. Um, and then that's, it does have some sort of mental toll on you because I, you know, I often think to myself, like, what's the matter with me? Like personality wise, why can't I hold something down? But realistically the girls are only interested in my looks as such. Um, nothing ever. I don't know. They don't have that. I, it's very hard to know when somebody's actually generally interested in you or they're just interested mm. in you because of your job or what you're doing. Um, but I just want to say as well that I've only been doing this professionally. Well, I say professionally, I I've been, I'm now a professional uh, full-time photographer and videographer for some YouTubers. Um, I help them make content and help them distribute their content. And my platform has uh, it, I, I'm kind of lucky because it's still able to be my hobby. Like my pro, my profile is what I enjoy. I can post what I want. I'm not reliant to it for, um, for, for an income. I don't have any ties to it where I feel like financial pressure or anything like that. Um, so I can still enjoy what I want to make and distribute it how I want. And I feel like mm. going back to what you said earlier, um, when you said like, you feel like it's the dream job as such. I feel like, people see it as a dream job because they might see it as, Oh, you're just taking photos. It's just a hobby. But mm. whatever your hobby is, as soon as you turn it into your full-time work, that hobby, and this is very, very hard to get a balance and, and to know the difference between work and hobby. If you're, if they merge into one, um, you know, you spend a lot of time doing it. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but yeah, in terms of like mental costs and, and stuff like that, um, there is obviously anxiety behind it. You, you do when you go to these events and stuff, you do get nervous. I often ask to take a friend with me just so I've got somebody to keep me company as such, because mm. to go to these events where you're surrounded by all these influencers or you don't know who you're going to meet, it is quite daunting because you're like, 
you know, who's going to be here. And at the end of the day, everybody's human. Um, mm. There's, there's nothing to worry about, um, but it, it can feel overwhelming as such before you attend, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's poignant what you said about like the relationship thing and, it's so interesting in it. Like you put yourself out there on it. Every put, puts, everyone puts themselves out there on Instagram and you yeah. put your highlight reel out and then you, you meet someone. That, I, I met someone yesterday that I know from Instagram. Yeah. And I, I met them the first time, obviously over Zoom. And I was like, oh, this is cool. You're just as cool as I thought you were going to be in real life. This is wicked. Um, what's in, interesting for you is obviously I know you in, in real life and I know your Instagram. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, it's it's just so interesting to know. Like, if I, like, real talk, if I just saw your profile and didn't know you, I'd probably think, oh, he's a bit of a ladies' man. He's a bit, a bit of, you know, I'm sure he gets all the girls and all of that. What's interesting is because I know you, I'm like, he's a really good guy. Like, he's a really good person, cares about people, cares about family, has really good values. And I think it's important that, like, when we're, I don't know how to word it, but like, when we're looking at these, role models and insta celebrities and stuff you gotta realize there's a person behind that and they're all they're authentic to who them to themselves and their authentic authenticity and who they are got them to that level and it's important to remember that your authenticity and who you are is your best asset and you can use that asset to actually stand out from the crowd be set apart be different um i think that's something something good and and i love that like your Instagram is like the shop from, but your Insta story shows a little bit into, you know, you've been building a gym at the moment, got to see you kind of putting <laughs> that together. Yeah. And, uh, it's good, man. It's good. I love yeah. it. One of the things I love about your, your Instagram is, uh, you do these little travel things. Yes. And so let's, let's talk about them for a minute. What inspired that? And maybe you can just explain kind of what, what they are to start with and then what inspired that. Yeah, so um, long and short of it, basically, um, myself and my friend Luke, uh, in fact, I've done it with a few of my friends now as well. Um, we've had these little spontaneous trips where we've just gone off to another country, just explored it for a day or a weekend and literally f- booked it on maybe the Monday, flew out on the Wednesday or all like the same day and then just come back a couple of days later. So you, I'm not missing any time from work. I'm getting a little trip out of it. But it, at the end of the day, like we try to look at it as it's no different to us driving down to say like Bournemouth or something, spending a couple of hours in the car heading somewhere or just hop on a plane and enjoy, get try and understand a bit of culture elsewhere mm-hmm. and just see what happens. There wasn't really much thought that went into it, to be fair. It was more of a, a spur of a moment. Just should we go do it? Yeah, let's go do it. Okay, let's go do it sort of thing. And, and, and we sort of like, headed off um but i feel like it's been a really really that them little trips they've been such good little experiences especially in terms of like um like building up your confidence like i'm quite a nervous Mm. person i do get anxiety i do get nervous and i do feel overwhelmed i feel like anybody that i feel like most people do um whether people like to talk about it or not i (laughs) i'm not somebody that does like to talk about it i'm the type of person that will either bite the bullet and, you know, get on with it and say everything's fine or I'll make up an excuse not to go or not to do something um, until Mm. I feel like I I can cope with it or whatever. But doing these little trips where I'm pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, going on a trip and, you know, doing it so quickly, it doesn't give my mind loads of time to think about what's happening. It doesn't give me time to like, think of all these situations and scenarios of all these things that could happen it doesn't give me time to worry i'm just like right this is the trip i'm looking forward to let's get on with it let's do it and Mm. i think that same mentality you can apply to whatever you're doing whether it's going traveling or whether it's something that you like if you're going on a date or say you want to start up a youtube channel the longer you leave it the more likely you are to talk yourself out of doing whatever it is that you want to do um my friend Luke that comes on these trips with me though, he helps me with my Instagram photos and bits and pieces. Um, so that sort of gave us a good little insight. Like why don't we go out there and take some photos? Let's get some photos. Let's, you know, try and explore some areas and such. So it gave us a little bit of a motive to do it. So like, it wasn't like, 
let's go over there and just we don't know what we're going to do because I feel like that's an, it's, it's a very easy way to waste the day if you don't know what you're doing. But like we'd find out all these little hot spots of all the places in the city that we'd go to. We'd travel there and, you know, we'd look around, get some nice food or whatever it might be. And then, you know, by the, by the time, you know, you're all finished, you're in your hotel and then you're getting ready to pack and go home, uh, ready to <laughs> ready for work on Monday. <laughs> so good. And, and those trips, like they weren't expensive, right? No, they're super cheap. Yeah. literally super cheap i think the last one we went to barcelona um this was before coronavirus and everything uh we f- i forget when we went i think it was february time and <laughs> i think it was 80 quid and i think we only spent about 50 year and that was flights accommodation return and food sorted travel like we just took the public transport and stuff like that like public transport in foreign countries is so cheap um i went to nice with my friend bailey right this was this was the first trip that we ever did that was like a super spontaneous one and it was only one euro to go from nice to monaco and it was like a 40 minute (laughs) um coach like bus ride across around the coast and it was one of the most scenic and and prettiest bus rides i've ever been in my life and it was like one euro it's crazy Mate, it's so good. I love what you said, like, about not giving yourself the chance to talk yourself out of it. Because there's this, like, theory that when your alarm goes off in the morning, like, don't let your mind think. The minute you let your mind think, you're going to turn it off. You're going to snooze. You're going to scroll Instagram. If you just literally, the minute you hear it, you get up, you go in the shower. Don't talk yourself out of the day. Like, don't even give yourself the chance to hit snooze. Exactly. Yeah, so good. And you can apply that to so many things in life. There's a, um, there's like a little uh, rule to stop procrastination. So when you, th- when you look at your to-do list or you think of a task, count down from 10 and just do it. Don't let your mind talk yourself out of it. I think yeah. that that is such a practical way to deal with the anxiety. Like count down from 10 and just go, literally just, just go. Yeah. Mate, you've been in you've been in GQ. You're 22. What was the nerves like doing the GQ shoot? I just want to know that as our last question. What how, what were those nerves like? <laughs> Wait one sec, my uh, camera's up. Um, right, <laughs> the GQ shoot. That was a very very surreal experience. To be fair, that was for celebrating Wool, which is a, a clipper brand for like barbs and stuff. It was their 100 oh, yeah. year anniversary, and. Yeah, I got I got asked to be one of the models for the for the uh, hairdressers, uh, barbers, and honest to God, I was so scared. I was so nervous. I was thinking like, what am I gonna do? Who's gonna be there? You know, what if I I mess up? Like this was one of the first like, well, it's probably the biggest shoot that I've done as such, and. Mm-hmm. I thought, I, I, honestly, I, I, I was just so nervous. I was just so, so nervous. But the guys there were so, so nice. But I just remember going, turning up, sitting down in the reception bit, being like, yeah, I'm here to get my hair cut. I'm not the tallest of guys. I'm only like five, five, eight. And I'm next to these other guys that are like six foot two models. And I'm thinking like, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of these people. Like what's going on? But like, I think, that w- it's just another mental block where you've, you've got this like picture in your head, what you think all models should look like. They should all be six foot two. They should all be tall, dark and handsome. And at the end of the day, you need to embrace your features, what you've got as a person and what you can show. I know mm. being in GQ, like they did want me for my aesthetics as such. They wanted to use me for my hair, but like, it doesn't matter how tall you are. If you want to do something, you can do it. You don't need to be a six foot model to be in GQ as such. You know what I mean? But yeah, how many how many times did you talk, try and talk yourself out of going to the GQ shoot? I'm gonna be completely honest. It was such because well, that happened when my Instagram like it, it was growing, but like it mm. was quite early on, so I was quite new to it. And when I like had the email come through and I was talking to the guy about it, I was like, I can't talk myself out of it. So I just I didn't let myself talk out of it. I thought this is such an insane opportunity. Mm. I need to grab it by the balls. I need to I need to do this. I need to be able to say that I've done this. And you know, my um my friend uh, Luke again, you know, he's like my best mate. And I remember messaging him when I was in the reception. I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I was already there. I couldn't back out. I knew I had to commit to it, but. Yeah, it was one of those situations where I just had to crack on with it. I just couldn't, I couldn't let it stop me as such. So good. 
I love it, mate. Because what, what everybody thinks when they see pictures in GQ is that those lads are like, beaming with confidence, so sure of themselves. No, you know, they know exactly who they are. They're real, like, handsome, masculine men. Meanwhile, you're, like, texting your mate, like, bricking it, mate. And I love that. Like, Literally. I love it because I think people need to, like, know that. They're, like, actually, you're just a, a guy trying to start a career. Like, That's all it is. As long that. as you're just honest with, your te- with yourself, yeah, you can push what you enjoy and you can focus on it. And just don't let the mental worries block you from or stop you from being who you are and doing what you want to do. At the end of the day, like life is so, so short. And if you don't, if you don't do what you want to do now in 10 years time or 20 years time, depending on how old you are, when you've got a family, kids, whatever, whatever it might be, you've got commitments that tie you down. You'll be looking back and you'll be thinking, I really wish I did that. Like that was one of the biggest things. Like when I went for this job, you know, I, I, I had a very secure job in a family business. I loved working with my family. We had a great structure. Everything was going so, so well. But I thought to myself, like, if I don't take this opportunity and I don't follow what I want to do as a, a, a full-time job, and, you know, I'm just going to regret it because I'm going to look back and be like, oh, I wish I gave it a, a, a chance. I wish I would had seen where it pursued you or where it went to, where it led to, um, mm. instead of just being stuck in my little comfort zone. and. I just feel like if you don't take that initial step and you don't stick to what you say you're going to do is a very, very easy way just to, yeah, it's it's so easy just to talk yourself out of everything when you, when you're unsure, if you're not completely confident about something, you can talk yourself out of anything. Yeah. hundred percent. I do it every day. I talk myself out of going to the gym every single day. Uh, Every day I find an excuse. I've literally just got myself a diary, right? And I've written down little things that I have to do, like little, little, um, like achievements and tasks. I've set myself a week basically. So I'm going running three times a week. I'm getting up at like half five, going for a run at six, you know, having breakfast or whatever. I've got my, my schedule for my posting. So I'm staying consistent with it. I've got all my little bits and pieces and they're all little missions and little tasks. And if I can tick them off, you know, I'm just slowly winning at my little goals, you know, so. So good. It's so good. good. Mate, I love it. I love it. Thanks for your time today, man. I appreciate it's it. Cool. No worries at all. Hope it's been okay. (laughs) Good. Good. Cheers, mate. Awesome. No worries at all. Thank you. See you later. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that conversation between myself and George. One of the big things that stuck out to me is when we look at these glossy magazines, the people inside them look like they have their lives together. They look confident and they look like they don't have a worry in the world. I think it's humbling to listen to the conversation back with George and see that he's just a real everyday person with the same challenges that you and I have. I love that he takes those mini vacations where he doesn't give himself the chance to let his anxiety talk him out of going. What opportunities do you have today that you need to say yes to? Don't talk yourself out of them. Take the leap of faith, take the opportunity. Have a great day and as always, like, share and subscribe. Kai, you still watching? You must have something better to do by now. Seriously though, thanks so much for watching today's episode from Inc. Remember, we all have those days where you feel like you don't matter. Everything's going wrong and no one is there to listen or relate. But here at Inc, you do matter. Remember, here you're included in something. You're part of a community where you are included. We want to inspire your future and bring a little bit of hope to your day. And before we wrap up, please do subscribe and stay connected to Inc. so we can continue to give you content that delivers a little bit of hope. See ya.